Hello and welcome to another edition of the Father and Son Podcast. I'm Patrick. I'm Kevin. That's my dad. How are you? Uh, we are continuing with our uh, very in-depth, this is proving to be a very time-consuming activity, of doing the all-time teams for each MLB franchise. I think we're in like six or seven around that time right six. now. Yeah. Uh, today is the Cleveland Indians. Uh, for those just joining us, a couple uh, features that we do. We just focus on the franchise that we know it. As so, the Cleveland Indians have been around since 1915, and another uh, qualification you have had to have at least three years of service time to be included in this dream team list. We do all position players, uh, starting pitcher, a reliever, like a setup man, uh, the best closer. We also have fun with choosing the best manager, and for the fun of it, the best logo. Um, we kind of ping pong. We go back and forth. Uh, Dad, I'm going to start with you. Uh, let's kick us kick it off with catcher. Who is the best catcher in I Indians history? Sandy Almar Jr. You want to say anything about Sandy? <laughs> Sandy was, uh, I think, like 12 years with the Indians, uh, longer than his brother, uh, or that with the Indians. But again, um, great brother combos in Major League Baseball, the history of the Alomar brothers. And the dad, Sandy Sr., was a great uh, second baseman as well in the Major Leagues. Very great baseball family. Sandy was a very steady catcher. Um, didn't put up outstanding numbers, but was solid every year and great defensive catcher as well. Yeah, I also chose Sandy. Uh, Jake Taylor was a certainly great uh, backup choice. There's going to be a few Major League references in here, so just bear with me here. I had to, it's the Indians. That's hysterical. I know. I, was, I thought that. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Jake was great. Yeah. He used to swear really well. He did. He did. <laughs> uh, so uh, so I want Sandy there. Uh, for the outfield as well as positions, it's very interesting because I don't – just kind of jumping ahead here. I don't know if there's a true best DH in Indians history. Some people are going to put Jim Tome in that position. I'm going to put Jim Tome as my first baseman. Um, he's the Indians' all-time home run leader. Uh, I was very surprised to learn that he never had a gold glove. I thought he was a little bit better with his glove in the early days. Um, but I have Jim Tomei, Hall of Fame Jim Tomei, as my starting first baseman. I agree wholeheartedly. Um, Hall of Fame uh, player as well. And again, as his career waned on, um, he became a really a DH. But great with the public. Did a lot of camps and everything else. And seemed to be very much a community-oriented uh, player. Um, big, big man. And again, um, I think over 500 home runs, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, great, great ball player and great for baseball. Awesome. The second base, who do you have? I got Roberto Alomar Jr. Okay. Um, Is he a junior there too? I thought it was just saying he no, was a junior. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. As a lot of juniors going on. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> but Roberto, again, um, great with the Indians and then moved on to a couple other teams. But again... One of the second basemen that went from a 280, not a whole lot of power second baseman, to a bigger second baseman with power and speed, and a really great baseball player. And I think he, in Major Leagues he played 15, 18 years. Mm -hmm. So he had a great career. I chose uh, Roberto as well. This is the second time he's coming up on, I think, both our lists. First time we talked about him was with the Baltimore Orioles. I think it's not the last, especially with the Blue Jays eventually mm -hmm. coming up. Um, but he only played with the Indians three seasons, but all three seasons were gold glove seasons and all-star seasons. So he certainly made a big impact in a short amount of time. And then from the Indians, Blue Jays to the Orioles, correct? I think the Padres were in there at one point, uh, yeah, too. I right. forgot how that broke down. Yeah. Um, but speaking of... Um, no, actually, sorry, bad, bad transition there. But let's go right to shortstop. Um, I have Omar Vizquel going defense. I don't mm -hmm. have a lot of great defense in my overall dream team, but with Roberto and Vizquel... Uh, I think uh, I have pretty solid any kind of people hitting a ground ball up the middle. Yeah, I agree with Omar. Um, Lindor, you know, is young guy coming up and everything else, you know, he has some thoughts. But Omar, again, longevity, yeah. great for the Indians, great defense. Um, not, not a whole lot of balls got through the middle. Uh, just a great player. And, again, longevity with one team. And when I mean, you think of the Indians, you think Omar. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of... People might, say, especially current fans, or will choose Francisco maybe over Omar. I just don't think Francisco has proven himself to be on this all-time dream team just yet. We'll see if he stays an in Indian. We'll see if he gets traded right. eventually. Uh, he's a great talent, of course, one of the best shortstops in the yeah. game right now. But I did not put him as my starting shortstop. I really have enough power in this lineup, as you'll see. Um, so I went with more of a glove. I agree. The um, Yeah, just a cornerstone when the Indians were fairly good and contended for the pennant and everything else. He was the cornerstone. So, again, uh, great player, great for the organization. Uh, third base? I have a Al Rosen. Me too. 
and I did research. There wasn't a whole lot of great third basemen for the Indians. I agree. Jim Tomei started as a third baseman, but mostly played first base and eventually DH. Yeah. So I, when I did the research and everything else, apparently, again, Al Rosen was a, you know, a nice, steady person uh, at third base. And through the lean years of the Indians, were one of their stars and uh, went from there. But I don't know a whole lot about him other than I think he's still in the top ten of all-time Indians. Yeah, he had a very short career with the Indians. It was the early 50s, I want to say six or seven uh, real seasons with the Indians. Uh, a lot of injuries toward the end of his life. He retired at uh, 32 years of old. 32 years old. And he went on to become a very successful stockbroker hmm. before owning um, the Yankees, or par partially owning the Yankees. So he wow. did earn a lot of money outside of baseball. Um, so I thought that was interesting. He made more money as a stockbroker than as a baseball player. Good research. Thanks. Good appreciate research. that. Um, again, back up there was Roger Dorn, but I went with Al, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm with Al Rose in there as well. Um, so far, we've been pretty, I think, exactly the same, right? You know what? Yeah, I think perfect. So. Yeah. Exactly the same. This normally doesn't, normally doesn't happen. So let's see where we are with the outfield. Left field, I went with Albert Bell. And I don't know if you chose Albert Bell here. So Albert Bell, again, is going to be a super big power hitter. I was surprised to learn he had a really great year one year. He hit 357. I don't remember Albert Bell being um, a big average hitter. I mean, as some were, were from Maryland, if you couldn't tell from the flag. <laughs> um, but Albert Bell was more of a DH once he came to Baltimore. But apparently he was a pretty successful outfielder for the Indians. Not a great defensive No, player, no, 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 absolutely, uh, yeah. But again, had really good numbers, and people that were very astute in baseball, Big guy. yes, yeah. said if Albert would have get you know kept you know his body in shape and really paid attention on training and really being the best player he could, he may have been a Hall of Fame candidate because he was on his way yeah. into the 300 to 400 home runs at a fairly early age. Yeah. And then he got out of baseball and all that. But people that said natural ability... Albert was the, the person that had a lot of natural ability, but again, I'm not sure how focused he was on baseball. Yeah, Fun Albert Bell story. He's always the guy with the stories. I got one. <laughs> when he was in Aura, it could be 99 or 2000, he got hit accidentally, not on purpose, and he refused to take first base. Everyone thought it was going to be like a bench-clearing brawl. Uh, both teams uh, cleared their benches and eventually had to take first base, but he it was like bottom of the ninth, tie game, two outs, and he wanted to be... Uh, the guy who won the game for him. Oh, okay. But he got hit, and Cal Ripken ended up getting that RBI. But huh. it's pretty tenacity if he was just like, I don't yeah. want to go. I don't want to go to first base. It probably didn't hurt him. Yeah, it didn't. It hit like his hand. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know if it hit him in a bicep. It definitely yeah, it, it would just off. bounce off. Uh, center field? Um, you, you know what? I have a different left fielder going back to Oh, I'm so field. sorry. I just it, assumed left field. It's field. okay. I had shoeless Joe Jackson. Now, was he on the... Indians in the, the early 1915s? I don't, Correct. Because I know he was on that 1919 Black Sox. Right. I don't know enough yeah, about he, that era. He was in the Indians first. Okay. And then apparently then he went to the White Sox and everything else. But Shoeless Joe, again, was top 10 um, of the all-time Indians. Okay. So, hey, when you get to mention Shoeless Joe, you take that opportunity. Absolutely. But, yeah. Uh, for center field, I obviously went with Willie Mays Hayes. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I went with Larry Doby. Again, not the best. Not a lot of, of center fielders. Larry Doby had a, a shorter season, a shorter career than I root. thought he did. I thought he had a longer career. Um, but he is a Hall of Famer and, again, um, has a pretty good pop. So I have a very offensive-minded outfield with uh, Bell, Doby, and you'll see my right fielder soon. Uh, but, yeah. I had Kenny Lofton. Really? So you went the fence? Yes. Okay. He was an unbelievable great player. Uh, he went through many teams, uh, but he started his career with – Cleveland. He was unbelievable in center field. He became the prototype of a guy that could cover, you know, you know, left field, the right field, great speed, basketball player at Arizona State as well. Um, but he was 6'3", 190, and just glided and stole a lot of bases. Great leadoff hitter. Him and Ricky Henderson used to really battle for, you know, great average and stolen bases and everything else. But that's where he began his career. And, um, he had a great career, but yeah, he was a very popular Indian back then. Awesome. Right field? Rocky Calavita. Now, that is a name I do not have, so please talk to me about Rocky. As I was growing up, Rocky was the guy, uh, the only player that the Indians had, and everyone loved Rocky Calavito. Uh, back then, he was probably the best right fielder in the American League, and American League had a right, lot of really good outfielders. But again, he was one of the few Indians that hit above 300. 30 home runs, 110 RBIs, batted cleanup, and again, a very popular uh, Indian. And through the 
probably the 60s and early 70s, was the man in Cleveland and just a great player. Awesome. I had Manny Ramirez. Uh, a lot of people just remember him, obviously, for his Red Sox years because championships mm-hmm. and whatnot. But he had a fantastic 90s with Cleveland before yeah. he became a Boston Red Sox. Um, again, Peter Serrano, close second. Um, but I went with Manny Ramirez for my right fielder. I thought Manny also has a pretty great arm, too. I think a lot of people kind of doubted that, but he, he could still throw. What made Red Sox switch him from right field to left field? Was it somebody else in right field at I th- that I time? Think, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Dwight Evans? No. No, Trot Nixon was either. Trot, yeah, I think okay. it was Trot. I think it was Trot. I think right. you're yeah. correct. Yeah. You're correct. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I had, yeah, I had Rocky, like I said, but Manny was my second choice. He did have great years with the Indians. And again, he was a much smaller man with the Indians than it was at the, the Red Sox. Um, but he was thin and ran the bases and everything else. He was a pro, prototypical out, outfielder. Yeah. Uh, for DH now a lot, obviously we had the same infield, uh, completely different outfield. We could have, um, he could have chose, chosen one of my fielders as his DH. I did not choose any of his fielders. I went with Joe Carter. Now Joe Carter, again, he, could have been an outfielder here for a little while. Could have been someone's first baseman. Um, I really didn't know where to put him, but I just couldn't not put Joe Carter on this list. Um, so I want Joe Carter as my DH. I had Albert Bell, but I had Carter as my backup in left field. Um, and you know the um, the Cubs traded Carter to the Indians in the uh, Eckersley deal. Um, Eckersley was a great pitcher for the Indians, but that's how Joe Carter ended up being Indian. Was a trade in the gosh. Seven, yeah, 80s, maybe? Yeah, like yeah. 81, 82. Uh, no, it's 84 because that's when the Cubs got to that one playoff. But Joe Carter ended playoff. up being a great player. Um, and, you know, yeah, but yeah, great, great. He was another great player, big guy, hit a lot of home runs and everything else. But yeah. All right, well, that is the offense moving into pitching. Um, I think we will have some interesting comments for the relief pitcher or the closer. Uh, but for the starter, it's Bob Feller. Um, I, I'm very curious if you don't have Bob Feller, I um, would love to debate who your possible second pick is. Go with you, and then I have some... Fi- uh, I lo- I didn't really know much about Bob Feller before this, and I looked up some of his mm-hmm. very impressive t- statistics that I just want to give him credit to. But I had Bob Feller as well. Um, the, the great thing about Bob Feller back in the day when they didn't have a gun was he actually had a train going like you know 80 miles an hour and he threw a baseball to try to beat the train and that's how hard that he was throwing was he measured him against a train <laughs> weird measurement yes weird measurement. and that's one i think he was one of the first ones to throw 100 miles an hour yeah well i don't have that's a cool that's a cool story it is. i uh i was very impressed with uh, a couple things let's talk about him as a hitter he had 99 rbis as a pitcher in his career that's so pretty good hitting hit eight home runs too um, so he could hit. I mean, that's 99 RBIs for a pitcher is unheard of. I don't know any pitcher in today's modern era that's got 99 RBIs. But his 1946 year uh, is one of the most impressive years of a pitcher I've ever heard. 371 innings pitched. It's Think not the that. dead ball era. It's not yeah. 1880. This you know this is extremely impressive. 36 complete games. Thirty-six. So I don't. I don't really care about my relief yeah. pitcher or closer because I have Bob Feller. Yeah, that's right. Um, He's sitting in the bullpen. Ten of those complete games were shutouts. Wow. And his total ERA was a two point one eight. Who knows who hit off of him? But ten shutouts in yeah. a season. Most pitchers today can't get that. Maybe in a, you know, a yeah. career. I mean, unless right. you're Justin Verlander, Clayton Kershaw. Well, the innings pitches. That's the thing. Oh yeah, that's the most impressive. Statistics. Right now, they or get, thirty-six complete games. Right. Right now, they get bonuses if they go two hundred. Yeah. So think about, you know, yeah. wrong timing, but he was a big old country boy. Yeah. And all he knew was throw the heat. and uh, But just that, yeah, I don't know, that's very impressive how in how much endurance he had. Because that's, it's insane. I agree. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. Along the way, again, there was some really good pitchers, starting pitchers along the way. I'll fill in the blanks and I'll let you take the real pitchers. But there was a gentleman named Early Wynn that was a sensational starting pitcher in the 50s. That ended up being White Sox and Red Sox, I believe. There was a left-hander called Sudden Sam McDowell. That was a great pitcher. One of the top left-handers in his era. Again, 50s and 60s. And who can forget Gaylord Perry. Oh, yeah. He was an Indian, too, right? Yeah, Yeah, I think the longest part of his career was with the Indians. And that's when he got in the most trouble. (laughs) There you go. Um, Would you... Do you want me to do uh, Setup Man? Okay, so I... 
could not think of anyone that really there wasn't a whole lot came to mind to choose from. So I just went with the current saves leader for the Indians. He's not an Indian anymore. And then the number two guy. So I went with uh, Bob Wickman as my setup man, who I do remember from the 90s. Yeah. He was pretty good. And then Cody Allen, which is a, a relatively new name, but just in a short amount of time for the Indians, he yeah. has become their all-time saves leader. When the, when they hit the playoffs, you know, last five years, whatever, he was the guy. Yeah. And that's when they had a pretty good bullpen back then, and he was the guy that came out in the last. But that's yeah. the only time that I can remember Cleveland having a decent bullpen. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't, but yeah. yeah. Um, did you have a, you just went with starters here? Did you have any relievers? Uh, you know, I went to relievers and I said, you know, all the research I had didn't come up with one, but I was going to mention during the forums of years with Terry Francone, that's when they had the best bullpen. Okay. But Cody Allen, um, I knew it was a saves leader. So okay. yeah, we'll talk about the manager since we've done all the position players and pitchers, uh, best Indians manager in a hundred and five years. I think it goes back to probably the early days with Lou Boudreau. Uh, he was probably, the guy that really didn't have much talent, but again, did the best he could and really made a name for himself. And I'm thinking it was probably 10 years he was the manager of the Indians. And then again, you got to mention Terry Francona, just with the recent um, oh, yeah. history. Uh, so those two are my two choices. Um, I knew much more about Terry Francona, who was a player for the Indians as well. So it was Lou. Lou played for the Indians I think too. Lou was a shortstop, if I'm not mistaken. That's not right. Uh, then became a broadcaster. But, yeah, those are my two choices. Awesome. I have Lou as well. Um, no need to add anything to that as well. We always end our segments with choosing our favorite uh, logo um, of the uh, team's history. There's been a lot of changes in uh, the Cleveland history. Most notably, no more Chief Wahoo. Um, that is no longer a thing. And now they're just going with a C for Cleveland. Dad, out of all these, what is your favorite logo? Chief Wahoo. Who, yes. I mean, how can you deny that? Yeah, say what you want in the comments. Mine's also Chief Wahoo. I don't really see a lot of differences between these two. Obviously, focusing on like the 86 one, I naturally go to Major League, which has been referenced a lot in this <laughs> podcast. Uh, but yeah, regardless, it's a, it's a pretty neat logo, pretty cool logo, pretty cool mascot. Um, but yes, offensive and definitely a thing of the past. Name the stadium that was uh, used in that movie. I don't know. You tell me. Cameron Yards. Oh, really? I didn't know that. That's yeah, interesting. Yeah, shot in Baltimore. So, well, Major League, the first one I thought came out in 89. So, Cam Yards wasn't there. Maybe the second so one. The second one was Cam Yards. Okay. You're right. Because they, uh, there's all these stories about when they did, were the downtown hotel in Baltimore and what they did to downtown Baltimore. And Charlie Sheen used to have a little liquid refreshment once in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, great stories about Charlie Sheen being in Baltimore. Now, there you go. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, please sound off in the comments if you know you disagree. It sounds like there might be some uh, d dissent about the outfield. Uh, maybe some more uh, pictures that we don't know about that maybe you do if you're a big Indians buff. Uh, but yeah, please like, uh, please give us a comment, please subscribe, and tune in every Tuesday and Friday uh, for more videos that we will upload. Great. I love Rocky Calavito. Remember that name. <laughs> yeah, Rocky Calavito. Learn something new every day. Yep. Thanks for watching.